and welcome to 4 Music Presents. Over the next half an hour, Morrissey will be performing songs from his brand new album, Ringleader of the Tormentors, along with a Smith's classic live in the studio. I'll also be chatting to the man himself. Now, his former band, the Smiths, were recently named the most influential band ever even beating the Beatles into second place. Now in his 18th year as a solo artist, Morrissey appears to be at the peak of his powers, both critically and commercially. So here is the great man himself with his latest single, You Have Killed Me. Hello, Morrissey. Welcome to the show. Thank Thanks you very you. much for being here. And welcome back to, to Britain and London. Yes. You've been spending you. a bit more time here recently. A, a bit less time here. A bit less time here. <laughs> yes, less time, yes. Is it, is it, do, you, do you not enjoy being in Britain then? Well, or? I do, but um, I just felt it was time for a change, time to get some different influence. Yeah. So um, I travelled to Italy, where I've been for most of the last year. Mm. Beautiful place. Did you kind of get a, a map of Italy and just go... Ooh. No, Where you? no, I didn't do that. No, I just went directly to Rome. <laughs> uh, beautiful place. And you've been, of course. Yeah, it's a yes. stunning, stunning yes. city. Mm. Have you, were there particular reasons why Rome then? I mean... No, it was an accident. I, I, I went to, I've been to Rome many, many times, but when I went there just over a year ago, I was completely mm. taken aback by just the beauty of the yeah. people and the ease and the... It's a million miles yeah. away from L.A. Yes, yes, it's completely the opposite to L.A., which is good. Parts of Valley as well seem incredibly false yeah. in a way because well, it feels like one big movie set, I suppose. It is, yes, it is. And that, I think, is what makes the city thrive. Mm. And some people enjoy that, but yeah. then most people can't, um, they can't leave their beds without psychiatric advice. But I heard something about the FBI, that you were yeah. interrogated by the FBI. Is that true? Yes, it's very true. Yes, Because well, I'd made certain anti-Bush comments mm. as... Millions of so people have. People, yeah. yeah, I mean, everybody does. I never hear any pro Bush <laughs> comments, but um, it's just part of the government thing that if anybody says anything, they have to be slightly frightened yeah. so that they'll keep their trap shut, really. What kind of things did they ask you then? Just uh, mundane things and quite threatening things and quite serious things. <laughs> yeah. Was it intimidating? Did you find it intimidating? It's, it's very intimidating, yeah, but it's meant to be. I mean, yeah. it's me meant to make you feel, um, oh, God, maybe I should just be quiet. Title itself of the new album, Ringleader of the Tormentors. Yes. Me and, and you know, mm. do you see yourself as a bit of a tormentor? I think I'm led to believe that I am. <laughs> I don't personally feel it, but I, I've been reading it for many, many years that I'm, uh, I'm out to cause trouble and I'm um, awkward. In terms of, of being a ringleader, you you have you are a ringleader in a sense of your fans. You have probably the most mm. loyal and devoted fans. Yes. Um, yes. Which is very. It's a, a nice thing, yeah. but there must be times as well that it's it's tiresome or it's. Well, it, it, no, it's it's never tiresome, and uh, I'm I'm relieved because they, they, it's an audience that likes real music, mm -hmm. and um, maybe even slightly old-fashioned in, in that respect. I don't know because it just doesn't seem to be required anymore that that you have that great passion about making music mm -hmm. and singing. Uh, it seems to be very unusual now. Yeah. But uh, the audience uh, really care about the music. I read as well that when you were in LA, it's kind of tiresome. The tiresome fact that I wanted to mention was the fact that you know you wake up every morning and there's someone at the bottom of your drive. Or there's... Yes. Yeah. Well, they're a completely different breed because mm. um, I think they are the type who actually know less about you right. than um, the average member of your audience. There's mm. a certain breed, certainly in LA, of people who um, they want you to see them. Mm. and they know it's not right and they, they block the gate and, and they more or less say well you're going to see me even though I know you don't want to so um, I don't like to think that they're very typical. They're different to the fans in the UK then? Yes, yes they are. 
Oh. What are your fans in the UK like? How would you well, I, I wouldn't completely brand them all as being <laughs> the same, but certainly uh, uh, um, uh, the, the concerts are, are, are very expressive and noisy, mm. but they seem to be a hell of a lot more rational than in other places. Mm -hmm. And, uh, dare I say, intellectual. The new album, you worked with um, Tony Visconti? Yes. yes. Was he... How did that come about? Was he kind of a wish list of someone that you wanted to work with? Yeah, he, he was always a wish list and he, he was always at the top of the list and he, he couldn't do it many years ago. Mm. Uh, I asked him and he was busy. So this time around we had a producer in that just didn't work out and uh, we called Tony and he was immediately available on the next plane and in the studio and everything was um, uh, astounding. Have you got a favourite Tony Visconti album then or, or a period? Or? I loved all the T-Rex stuff. I thought that was fantastic. Mm. That all happened when I was 11, 12, 13, yeah. and I was grabbing it and mm. completely in love with it. So, um, of course, it's just a mad dream now that he would do this album. There's a couple of themes in the album that kind of really relate to death and love. Mm. Now, you've, you've, you've sung and, and written about death in the past, and what mm. amazes me in all the stuff that I've read is why people are so bemused and taken aback by the fact that Morrissey could be in love. Yes, well, I'm not. I so. find it bizarre, though. <laughs> Maybe it's a love affair with Rome. Yes. Probably. <laughs> There's obvious little comments on hanky panky in the album, which. Well, I think they're always. You know, people make of it what they want. Yes, they take, but they I make it all. I always alluded to hanky panky <laughs> along the way, but uh, this time around it seems to, to mean something to, to many reviewers, which is, which is fine. Maybe they're not getting it, so it's suddenly kind of going. Well, they're, they're most they're most really people don't, you know. <laughs> they really don't. Uh, OK, would you say that you're at your most happiest? Uh, generally, these days, yes. Mm. Generally, these days, yes. It's terrible as a human being to be defined by record releases, but I am. Yeah, and, but... but... You know, so I have this album, I have this single, and they make me very happy, mm. so... You seem very happy. Well... I mean, I've never met you before, but well, you seem very charming, lovely, happy man. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> is it easier to write lyrics in a happier place? I, I don't think so. And I, I, if you are a songwriter, you have to document everything, whether you feel happy or sad. And you can't simply say, oh, I feel happy today, so I really should write. Mm. You should document absolutely everything, um, all the moods in between and all the, um, the mood swings. Yeah. Everything should go down. Uh, for better or worse, and uh, regardless of how you think people are going to accept it. Do you think you could have written Heaven Knows I'm Miserable Now in 2006? No, because uh, the song came out of the previous years mm. of the time in which it was written. If you'd been this happy at this point of sort of happiness in your teens, how different would your life have been? Completely different. <laughs> Completely different because um, I only ever did what I did and turned out as I did because uh, I hated being a teenager, so um, so in those very in that very early footage of the Smiths, I can see all the mm. pain and anguish that led me to that position. So I, I try not to watch it. Do you secretly like seeing that old footage, though? Do you kind of? I absolutely do not secretly not? like seeing. No, it. no, I publicly <laughs> hate it, and I secretly hate it. <laughs> Were you offered something like, was it $5 million or something to yeah. reform yeah. Yeah. Smiths? Was, yeah. that, was it too much money or was it not enough? Or what was well, I, I didn't know whether it was too much. I didn't know whether it was too little. It didn't occur to me because there isn't enough money in the world. Why? Why? Because it's, it, it, it isn't a question of money, really. Mm. It's, um, it's far too emotional. Um, you can't simply... Well, I couldn't sing with people who... I don't really like <laughs> so why would I be doing it? When did you first get at music? How old were you? Very, very young. Can you remember what the kind of first thing yeah. that you heard was or you were listening to? I was, I was six when I began to buy and uh, I was obsessed with pop music, mm. absolutely obsessed with the radio and uh, I never stopped listening, ever. It's like music's like having a friend with you though, it takes you through those... Mem you, those memories, those emotions, yeah, those... It's the best friend, I think, that you can possibly have. <laughs> the most loyal friend. Absolutely. Um, are you looking forward to getting this, um, this, this... Well, getting out and performing this new album to, to your fans? Yes, yeah, definitely. Definitely. And uh, we, we have a long t 
tour ahead of us and everywhere the tickets have just gone yeah. so um that's for me that's incredible and quite smaller venues than you than you could it, sell in out. england yes in england yes uh, elsewhere not necessarily but um in normal domes yes yes i've got to ask how do you pick your set list because mm. you've got just such a massive it's, it's a very selfish thing. selfish selection it really is just simply a question of what would I like to sing, mm. and nothing else comes into it. But you still play Smiths within that? Yes, yes I do. Because they're very good songs, and the reason why the Smiths uh, have lasted in, in people's minds is because the songs were fantastic. Nothing else. Just, <laughs> really, just the songs. Just the songs. Timeless? Yeah, I think so. Um, will you play it one for us now then, please? I'm panting. Marvellous. OK, playing us out tonight with a Smiths classic from 1984. This is Still Ill. Thank you. <laughs>